Welcome to Charge Heads. My name's Tim and uh, we're here with Ralph to get loads of updates on the TVR. Unfortunately, some of the updates aren't good. Now, let's start with the bad. It's probably the best thing to do. And then we can end on a high, uh, we hope. So, uh, Ralph, you uh, showed me the chassis earlier and it looks like there's loads and loads of stuff going on. Um, but there's a problem, isn't there? You do have a bit of a problem, Mike. Other than this car, um, yeah. Well, it's a TVR. Yeah. So if we look down here, we can see the chassis cracked. So we, oh, we've taken the, God. there was a lump of what looked like weld on top of it. Oh, is that a previous repair? I wouldn't call it a repair. It's definitely previous. But it wasn't really stuck to anything. So we've taken that lump off and you see this crack all the way around. I do. So what we're gonna to have to do is finish treating that, V it out a bit, do a proper welding job on that mm. and grind it back to look original. That one's also been cracked. It's welded up not quite as badly, but it's still got holes in it. So again, we'll, we'll V that out, weld that up to make it absolutely secure. But the real problem is the ones at the back. Now, we knew there was an issue with them, with the, the hideous looking weld. Oh, hello. Oh, we found some... Uh... Yeah, look at that. Some previous. So just taking the, the overweld, that really wasn't holding anything together off. What we found is a big hole. It's a gaping hole. Oh my God. Really bad. That's Same horrific. on the other side. Okay. Oh dear. That is not good at all. So again, we need to do a proper repair on those. So we need to get some metal into it. Right. And weld it up properly so it's a good, strong repair and then dress it all so that it looks absolutely original again. Awesome. Yeah, because I think uh, I wouldn't want to be going on the road with uh, gaping holes in my chassis. Uh, yeah. No, so that's, that's where your seat goes. So <laughs> that's what you were sitting on. Well, uh, having uh, looked at the um, TDR recently, it looks somewhat of a uh, Flintstone type drive system. Meet the Flintstones, they're the modern Sonic. At the moment. Yeah, you've got, you've got good shoes, haven't you? you yes, can. yes. Very durable. Robust, needed. And we've got the orange HV uh, covers. Oh, well, sorry. Ca well, that's where the cables are going to go inside, aren't they? So this is conduit. 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 And what we do is we, we need to put conduit over the cables anyway because they're exposed to the elements yeah. to protect them. So what we do is when we're making the cables up, is we mock it up with the conduit first, right. get the right lengths, then we can make the actual cables the correct length. Excellent, okay. And I see, as I kind of move around here, we've got a floor. The yeah. car hasn't got the floor, but the chassis has. Yeah. <laughs> so what we're gonna have here is the, the Tesla motor, the inverter, yep. the charge controller, Lots of uh, pieces of equipment that are fairly delicate. Anything being flipped up from the road coming up there could potentially damage them, as well as all the cabling. So what we've done is we've put an aluminium under tray underneath it. And to fix the under tray, we are modifying the motor mounts to have little drop down uh, mounting points on it so you can bolt the under tray to the motor mount. Right. So there's no modifications to the chassis at all. It all bolts into the original mounting points. Definitely not, definitely not. And uh, I'm sure that's going to increase uh, efficiency by a few miles per kilowatt, right? Well, it does give you a much more of a flat floor, so it will help a tiny amount. Teeny weeny, lovely. Okay, super. Ralph, I nearly tripped over. What have we got on the floor? So uh, we've been propping the whole project up. You see what I did there? That's really no, good. No, uh, these are the prop shafts that connect the, uh, the motor and gearbox to the rear axle. So what we do on our projects is we mock up a rough idea using bits we've got lying around. So that's cut up bits of Jaguar prop shaft and other things. Oh, the, the old, older rusty um, yeah. version there, okay. So um, <clears throat> that's a piece of Jaguar, that's uh, a piece of Rover, uh, old Rover. And it means it's got the right ends for what we need to do. And we worked out where we wanted a center bearing because it's quite a long prop shaft and we don't want it going into resonance. Ralph, what's a center bearing? Come so on. This, this bit here, this is me you're talking to. Yeah, this supports the prop shaft. Right. Because um, if you have one long prop shaft, it can start wobbling quite easy. Um, so it's easier to balance two separate prop shafts together 
for something that's going to run at high speed. Right. If it was a low speed truck, we would do it as a single piece, but for the speed you're going to drive at, a two speed is better, a two part is better, so we can balance it. So we make up a really rough prop shaft. We check it out, make sure it all works, it doesn't bind up and all the rest of it. And once we're happy with it, we send it to one of our suppliers and tell them to make us one like that, but using all new bits. And which supplier made this prop shaft horn right here? Look at this. So this is made by Bailey Morris in Eaton Soko, not too far away. No. Uh, it's all new parts, fully balanced, completely new custom prop shaft. Look at that. Oh, wow. I think I want to take it home and stroke it. <laughs> that, yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Uh, it's, uh, it's quite long. Well, so uh, it's there. Uh, and it's, it's black as well. Mm. Which, uh, yeah. Mm. Anyway, I think we better move on. Yeah, moving on. And uh, you've taken out the uh, heater system. Is it a heater system, a matrix? What, what, what do you <clears> call this? Yeah, so this is the bit behind the dashboard. Um, that's the vent that goes up and goes to the windscreen demisters. So your dashboard goes over this area here. Mm -hmm. That's the motor that blows air. Air comes in from the engine bay through that hole there. Blows it in through there. Inside that bit is a heater matrix. So hot water from the old petrol V8 cooling system went into that heater matrix under there. So it blows air in through that. And there's a little flap so you can blend between hot and cold air. Right. These vents come out into a dashboard um, vents that blow into your face. Okay. And these two here blow air down onto your feet. Okay. So you've got these little controls that pull levers and uh, adjust the flaps in there to dictate where the air goes. Ah, oh, yes, adjustable flaps. Yeah, it's adjustable flaps and another Excellent. flap here to adjust hot and cold. And what that does is it pulls a flap that di directs the air either through the heater matrix or not, depending on whether you want hot or cold air. Right, I see. Okay. And uh, is it a question of just popping in a up-to-date uh, resistor-style heater inside that box? Very good, indeed. So what we're <laughs> going to do is use a PTC heater, which yeah. you refer to very well. Uh, we'll use a, a ceramic-based one because they're very, very reliable. Yeah. We'll put a new motor on it, so it'll blow air across this PTC heater, and that'll blow warm air through and help you demist the window. Excellent, and keep my jubblies warm. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Uh, the most efficient um, way of keeping a, an occupant of an EV warm is to have seat heaters. Um, and I see, uh, who's it who's just come up with heated seat belts? Was it Volvo? I've never even heard of that. Yeah, someone's just patented a heated seat belt. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Because you're trying to heat the person, not the air around them. Mm. It's the person who needs to be warm. The car's not bothered. No. It's a good um, idea, actually. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, you've bought the um, Mazda seats. Yes, that's Which it. have got heated heating they helmets have. in them. They so have, So if we can get yeah. that working, that'll be good. It and would be. <laughs> and that'll drop the loading on, on that one, so you get yeah. a more efficient vehicle. Yeah, it'd be nice and warm for the winter. Hopefully, the batteries won't be so cold that the car won't move. We'll uh, have to see for next year, I suppose. It'll be a great motor in the winter, though. I can just see you with your off-road tires on it, going through the snow. <laughs> It's not going to be an off-road vehicle, Ralph. Stop it. Jack Stop trying to make road cars into off-road vehicles. Jack up the suspension. No. Bull Stop bars it. on the flat. T-girl with bull bars. Just because it's in the air now doesn't need, mean it's going to be absolutely slammed to the floor. This is the sort of ride height <laughs> I was anticipating us going with. Hmm. There, there does look like there's quite a lot of lift oh, going on here. I've already got some new wheels for you. Oh, God. Uh, see, we yeah, a nob knobbly bobbly action. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, that that will that will fit in there really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe not. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So where are we going next? CCS two. Oh, yeah. Yes. So yeah, the CCS two. We've uh, you've managed to make it fit. Um, you sent me a video a little while ago. So today's question is, can we make this CCS two socket? fit in that filler port. Um, okay. Give me a minute, I'll think of something. And uh, yeah, you're trying to make 
make it fit Try, trying to find ways yeah, to make I think, it fit I think fit is a very ambitious loosely yeah. so, loosely so we're trying ideas about how to make it work and particularly the wiring behind it and where that goes because there's big cables that come out of it and they've got to miss various bits that are what was the amp inside. cable 150 amp did you say so if we do 50 kilowatt charging yep we'll be passing uh, 142 amps down the cable uh, but we want to protect in case we work out that later on we want to go to a higher charging rate and also we never run cables at their absolute maximum rating we always have a bit of a margin so we're going to be using cables that are capable of running sort of three 300 350 amp through them to give us a bit of headroom and a bit of safety so getting those all to fit in there um, is a bit tricky uh, they're not easy to bend around tight radiuses yeah um, and we're also thinking about um, crash safety and the such like if someone does go into there where do all the high voltage cables go ah yeah um, see I would have thought that um, so it's uh, just I, just making it all safe I would have got very electrocuted by now I don't think to be honest I, I would have been able to probably do all the cutting and ripping out but none of the safety and putting it back together that, that's uh, that's what I've got you on board Ralph yeah absolutely yeah. It's, it's one of those things it, it's one thing to make a car physically move with electric power but to do it safely, robustly, and reliably is, is completely different. And that is what the TVR wedgie build is all about. Safety, reliability, and... Other things that TVRs aren't associated with. Exactly that, exactly that. So thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the update and we'll see you next time. And I'm sure it'll be very soon because Ralph is absolutely on fire, aren't you Ralph? I'm on fire.